Hey everyone, welcome to Smart and Vinyl, where we're going to talk a little records, a little music, and a whole lot of meh. But actually just a little bit of meh tonight. So I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's in the mood to talk records. Uh, as you can tell, it's obviously my bedtime, but I decided to drag out the record collection because there's no bad time to drag out your record collection. So I have my uh, 40. I'm in it for the long haul tonight. So let's get record talking. So as you know, my other hobby uh, is, well, it's more like work, it feels like, but my other hobby is matchbooks, right? And collecting. And, but I, I love local history, especially Southern California history. And tonight's record topic has a lot to do with that. I love the old characters who really made Los Angeles unique. And just, it, it just, I love reading the stories and the drama. So if you didn't guess, or if you didn't read the title on the side, Tonight we're going to talk about Corla Pandit. Now you're like, who the hell is Corla Pandit? Well, you should know who Corla Pandit is. It's one of the best organists ever, ever. And I'll get into the whole organ stuff later. But he's one of the best organists and he's a mysterious person. Look into his eyes. He's so dreamy and exotic and mysterious. Uh, exotic if you mean St. Louis. Missouri, because that's where he's really from. But don't matter. I look. Oh, I'm so hypnotized. Anyways, so Coral Pandit uh, was an organist, a fantastic organist. Uh, he ri originally was from St. Louis, and I know he looks Indian. And his story is that he's from New Delhi, and he's related to, you know, all these Indian people and stuff like that. Truth is, he's from. St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, he is born John Roland Red, which is no big deal. Everyone changes their name and stuff for Hollywood. But when he passed away in 1998, uh, it was like they found, you know, Jimmy Hoffa's body. Because there's tons of stories about, oh my God, he's really African American. He's not Indian. Well, oh my God. Dude, really? This is like 60 years after he came out. And now everyone gives a shit. Like, who cares if he's African American? Who cares if he pretended to be Indian? Everyone did that back then. Everyone pretended to be some culture they're not, some name they're not, some, whatever. Who cares? So, anyways, uh, that's why he looks mysterious. You know, um, that's why he dressed like an Indian. But his music is absolutely great. Uh, when he did have his television show on KTLA in the, it started in the late '40s. Uh, he wouldn't talk to anyone. He would just stare at the camera and gaze because that was his whole mystique. But he really, if you take away like the hokiness aspect of it, he really is like the godfather of exotic music and that whole lounge, you know, easy listening style of music. Uh, he mainly just played the organ and piano and what he did on the organ was really amazing like if you go on YouTube and look at videos and watch him play he's making all kinds of sounds and doing stuff with the organ that you know it is creating these sounds like when you listen to Martin Denny and all that you hear all the little xylophones and you know, he didn't use any of that it was like the fucking organ and it was pretty amazing so um you know he started off just on the radio and he actually had another name before Corla Pandit. He was Juan Rolando, which I like. I kind of like it better, but anyway, so he was Juan Rolando, and then he became Corla Pandit. And he played around until like 1949, and he got his own show on KTLA called Corla Pandit's Adventures in Music. And it would be him playing, and he'd have dancing girls or whatever, and an announcer. And he did, um, you know, background music for shows and radio shows and he performed non-stop to like the day he died. He even had a class. It was called Corla Pandit's Master Class. And it taught you how to play the organ by the master. And it taught you how to be mysterious too. So he did that. Uh, all around just a badass dude. Um, here's an interesting fact that I always find bittersweet. Uh, in 1951, he decided to leave KTLA for greener, I guess, more mysterious pastures. And he was going to make, like, they're called short films or scopatones, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, his contract didn't work out, and they ended up giving the contract and the deal to a young man named Liberace. And then, of course, Liberace became a superstar. Eh, I would have rather saw Coral Pandit. I'm not a big Liberace fan, but shh, don't tell Vita Mia that, because then, you know. Anyways, so I find that interesting. Um, you know, I wonder just how big Corla would have been if he just, it, when it went through. But let's talk about the records. So 
the one I showed you is probably one of the more common ones. It's Corla Pandit, um, the music in the exotic East and fantasy was the label. He put most of his stuff out on. He probably put out a bajillion records and they all did back then because it was cheap and easy. And I'll go way more into this when I do the Rusty Warren episode because trust me. So anyways, what's neat about this record, obviously it was pressed in blue vinyl, which makes it even more mysterious. And with most exotic music, as you know, there's a fair amount of originals, um, but even the originals get recycled over and over again. And people love playing other people's music. So like this has like Miserlou, uh, all kinds of stuff, but it, it's actually really good. Like really, I, trust me, I, I used to listen to a lot of Exotica back when I was record collecting hardcore, like 20, 25 years ago. Exotica records were what you wanted to find. That was the really hard thing to find and in good condition and stuff like that. Because people sample them. Um, that whole kind of Exotica scene came back. So you really looked for that. And I listened to a lot of Exotica, trust me. So Corla Pandit stuff is really good. I think it aged really well. So, you know, check it out. It's really good. Uh, I also have this one, Speak to Me of Love. Well, I will once I look into your eyes, Corla, because you're so mysterious. Uh, I do think this is on colored vinyl as well. And it is. It's red. Oh, I can see through it. So, once again, let me see. Oh, the, the songs aren't on the jacket on this one. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of these actually are originals on this one. Not a whole lot of covers. Mona Lisa's on here. But other than that, very, very good album. So, and then I have, this is covers. It's all... Uh, music for Hollywood, music of Hollywood. Um, this is not on fancy colored vinyl, but he does do, why don't they put the songs on the jacket? Like I know a lot of old timey records do that. I don't know why. So this, yeah, it's not colored vinyl, but it is fantasy. So he does like theme from Exodus around the world in 80 days, stuff like that. This one's very, I like all of them. I do. And I'm not just saying that. Um, it's all on YouTube so you can find it. Um, and YouTube even has stuff on his TV show. But it's all the same. And he did a lot of 45s too and 78s. But that's my second rule of record collecting. My first rule of record collecting is no dollar records. My second rule is no 78s. No one collects 78s. And they're a pain in the ass to deal with. So don't get the stuff. Trust me, you're going to be tempted. You're going to be like, oh, look at these cool records that are really thick and brittle. These must be worth a lot of money. They're not. Just stay away. Stay away from the 78s. Uh, and then I have this one, which I think there's three or four in this series. Uh, but this is really good. This is more kind of instructional, but still the same. But look, oh shit, he signed this one uh, in 1993. So someone brought this to something he was performing at. This was to Jose, not to me, but it's still very cool. This one also is not on colored vinyl. So uh, they're all really good. They're all really good. And I know what you're thinking now. You're like, well, but it's organ music. I mean, you know, and I get that. I get that. Um, there's a lot of good organ music and there's a lot of good people who still like good organ music. And believe it or not, there's still organists out there. I know you're just like, I thought they all probably died. Yeah, but there's still a few out there. Um, and But be careful. Be careful. Because there are some definite organ hooligans out there who will not put up with your shit. So you need to watch out because they will beat you. They will take a chair and smash it through your window. It's, uh, you know, they'll riot and loot if you do not respect the organist or if you badmouth them. So, I, you know what? Right now, I'm probably going to get a bunch of shit in the comments about it. But you know what? I don't care. I would say Corla Pandit's my favorite organist. And guess what? Jimmy Rhodes is my second organist, favorite organist. How about that? You know, how about that organ? Because, you know, what? I like more of the exotic stuff, the roller rinky kind of stuff. Um, I know, I, and I'll, I'll post a little thing maybe that tells you like the ranking order of organists because you need to know this if you're going to start talking organ music. But you know what? Like what you like. And I hope you like Corla Pandit because really, it's lively, it's fun, it's interesting. It doesn't sound like you're just listening to the Dr. Fibes soundtrack. It doesn't sound like you're in church. It gets you going, it's invigorating, it gets your creativity going, and it's great. 
So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Smart and Vinyl. I know I got a little rambly, but you know what? I, I just, I'm passionate. I'm passionate about my records and I want you to enjoy them too. So please, if you can, find some Corla Pandit, okay? Find some Corla Pandit, listen to it. Don't bother the Oregon hooligans, you know, because they will turn on you and just fuck you up. So like what you like and like some Corla Pandit. Maybe some Jimmy Rose, but you like the Corla Pandit. So anyways, from my house to yours, from my record collection to yours, please like my videos, share my videos, subscribe to my videos. Just, just, you know, don't, don't beat me. Oregon hooligans, don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Oregon hooligans. You know, I know I should be listening to Virgil Fox and Gaylord Carter, but I just, every time I hear Gaylord Carter's name, I'm just like, huh, 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 huh. You know, and I know it's wrong, but please just let me listen to my Corla Pandit. I'm sorry. Anyways, see you later. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.